As you're designing and building something complex like a cyclocopter, it's a good idea to have a way to measure and compare progress. In the instance of a cyclocopter, it'd be good to have an accurate thrust stand. Unfortunately, mine has some serious issues. If we take a look at my thrust stand, you can see that the scale is directly underneath the rotor. This means that it directly measures the vertical component of the force that is produced. However, this stand also measures the horizontal force due to the hinged right corner of the stand. The bearings allow the horizontal component to produce a moment on the stand, which rests on the scale and in turn increases thrust. This means that this design of the thrust stand directly counts both the horizontal and vertical components of the thrust. Now, this isn't necessarily bad until you look at the airflow produced by a cyclorotor. A simulation done by the Siberian Federal University found that cyclorotors shoot out airflow in a wide plume. In a real-life scenario where the airflow is directed downward to make a cyclocopter fly, only the vertical component of this force actually contributes to thrust. However, when put on this thrust scale design, the full vector of the airflow directly increases the value on the scale, and therefore the thrust reported. This results in a higher thrust value than I actually get while it's on a fixed wing or a cyclocopter. We can compare this with a different thrust stand setup. It's quite simple, I just need to switch the place of the bearings and the scale. This stacks the vertical component of the airflow over the bearings, which means that the force transmits directly into the ground and doesn't affect the reading on the scale. This results in the horizontal component being the only airflow that affects the reading on the scale, which in turn gives me an accurate representation of the thrust I'm getting. Now, you may be thinking that this is an insignificant increase in thrust. Maybe 20 to 30 percent? Wrong. The faulty stand has been giving me values that are 60 to 70 percent higher than the intrinsic value. Finding this out solved lots of problems for me. Why my first cycloplane wasn't working, why my second cycloplane wasn't working, and most recently, why the cyclocopter wasn't working. It turns out that the cyclocopter had less than a 1.1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio, which is not enough margin for the flight controller to control it. Now, since I've discovered this issue, I've put a bigger motor on it that delivers 25% more thrust without any significant weight gain or efficiency decreases. This puts me around 240 grams of thrust per rotor in comparison to 190 with the previous motor. This will be more than enough to fly the 700 gram cyclocopter. I'm currently working on subbing these motors into the last three cyclorotors, so hopefully I'll have a free flight soon. Until next time.